Okay guys, I would never lie to you. I would never say a game is good if it isn't. And I would never make you buy a game that you would probably end up regretting because I didn't explain the game enough or good enough for you. I'm trying to steer you in the correct direction, whichever way I possibly can. And uh, today is such a day. We are tackling top 10 indie developed games on the Nintendo Switch currently. And I say we because I have a little help in this video. These 10 games are not in any specific order, but I want to start off with Yonder. Because now that there are so many games on the Switch, this one has drowned in the eShop. So actually, maybe some people have not heard about it or seen it, but it's such a cute game still. And it is just such a green grass game. That is a genre that I invented. <laughs> And Yonder is just such a fun time. It is an adventure game by Prideful Slot and it is out for PlayStation 4, PC and Switch. And it was released in 2017. I personally played this for my first time on the Switch back in 2018, I think. And I also did a full review of it. The gameplay consists of you controlling your character, exploring the open world environment actually, while collecting a bunch of materials and magical sprites among a lot of other things that you can collect. You can farm a bit, you can tame cute creatures and you can go fishing and even do some stuff like climb mountains and glide down from them, exploring the islands' eight zones with several settlements and villages. This game is a game that tries to have everything within it. A weather cycle, a day and night cycle, and a bunch of crafting guilds that you can join, like a carpenter's guild, I mean. The game has a lot of side quests. When I played this game, I was obsessed, of course I was, I feel like that's the only thing I am with games, I'm obsessed. But it's just such a beautiful game. The light engine that they're using, I don't know what it is, but it's just super beautiful. It's a beautiful game and I don't want anyone to sleep on this title. Because in my opinion, this is one of the best indie developed games that are now on the Switch. So that was Yonder everyone. Now let's hear what Indie Gaming Guild has as his first game. So my first game that I'm excited to talk about is A Short Hike on Nintendo Switch, and it's a really wonderful calming game. So A Short Hike, you basically play as this little bird who has to make it to the top of a mountain peak at Hawk Peak Provincial Park. And your little bird companion has to make it to the top because that's the only place that they can get reception to make a phone call to their mom. So it's a very simple premise, but that's what guides you to get up to the top. This game is, is more of a, a relaxing exploration exploration based game in which you take your little bird and you basically have to find your way to the top and now you can do that in a multitude of ways you can take your time and talk to all of the cute and adorable animal characters you can play little mini games like a little beach volleyball type game and you can understand more of this world and why all of these characters are here but essentially your goal is to uh, acquire more golden feathers so these golden feathers are act as sort of a stamina meter where essentially the more you get the more you can climb up the mountain and the more you can soar around without losing that energy and you can get those from quests or from buying them most likely it's a very simple game but it's just meant to be relaxing and laid back and i played this at a time when i really needed something to just unwind with and it only takes you know maybe a couple of hours it's not long probably less if you just go right through it but it's a game that encourages you to explore you can find little treasure chests and little characters that are competing in a race down the mountain um, and little moments like that are what make it shine and so once you eventually make it to the top uh, you make that phone call and of course I won't ruin any of the little story beats but then you can of course just take your time and enjoy exploring you can do little fishing mini games you can find items underground so it's just a really nice relaxing mini adventure and I think if you're into a game like journey or flower or something like that and, and love the adorableness of something like Animal Crossing then I think a short hike might be one that you really enjoy and it's one that I absolutely recommend so my next indie developed game that I recommend is definitely spirit Fairer, a game that I have now recently played. It is actually a game that was suggested to me by Tiny Hats and a bunch of you guys in the comment section over the past months. Have you played Spirit Fairy? You should try Spirit Fairy. It's such an Isha game. 
and you were correct. When I just gave this game a chance and truly felt invested, there was no going back. As this is a game that carries several of the game elements that I usually tend to like in games, like collecting a ton of things and crafting and farming, and it also has a very happy and colorful graphical style that I tend to like. The Spiritfarer's job is to help lost souls cross over to the afterlife. So it has a tiny bit of sad tone to it, as you are a Spiritfarer and you deal with dead people. Your main hub is your ship, which you can upgrade and customize and choose where you want all your rooms and facilities to be. Spiritfarer feels like an open world, even though it is a 2D graphical style game, because of the ocean map basically, and it is huge. You navigate your ship by setting a marker on the ocean map and then your boat will travel there. And meanwhile you travel, you can fish a bit or check in on the progress of your cooking or any of the other workstations. Talk with your spirits that are along for the ride or use your crafting benches to get more of a specific type of material that you may need for some of the several side quests of the game. This is a good game and it has a soul and I like the graphics, I like what you do, I like the gameplay, I like the writing, I, uh, I like the music. So Spiritfarer is getting an approved by Isha, stamp of approval, if that is a thing. Now the next game uh, of Indie Gaming Guild. And the next game I'm excited to talk about is Daddish. So Daddish is a little platforming game where you play as a radish who also happens to be a dad. So it's, it's a silly combination. Uh, this is made by one developer, Thomas E. Young. It's a very inexpensive game. I think it comes in at less than $5 US. Um, but essentially it's just a little stage-based platformer. Uh, actually pays a lot of homage to Super Mario World in some of the sounds that you'll hear in transitioning from the stages, as well as the little overworld map. It's obviously much more simple and can be finished in a couple of hours if not less but essentially it's a little 2d pixel art game that you play as this little uh, radish dad dadish and you go through these little stages uh, like a beach area and a forest area and a mountain area things like that it's very simple in premise but the execution is great you know you just jump around you double jump and the best part is at the very end when you get to one of your uh, radish children and they each have these funny little lines and quips and it just it really brings a smile to your face it's a fun happy-go-lucky platformer with some silly bosses and uh, all of the enemies are like based around food. I really recommend it. It's fun if you love platforming games. Um, there is a sequel, Daddish 2, that is really good as well, but for my money, the first one is the best. So if you're looking for a really fun, lighthearted uh, indie game that you can play on the Switch, especially to go in handheld mode, it's a really fun, charming platformer. Now, actually, the first game that I thought of when I thought of this uh, video idea on this list was actually Graveyard Keeper. Also looks like Graveyard Keeper. Also looks like Graveyard Keeper. But this one actually looks like Graveyard Keeper. So Graveyard Keeper is one of the most unique indie games I have ever played, actually. Maybe I can even call it the best indie game I've ever played. Maybe, but that is perhaps stretching it far, but you get the general picture. It is one of the better or best slash something indie games that I have played. I don't know, it just made such an impression on me when I played it. It is basically a dark and gothic Stardew Valley. And it is super morbid. You are dealing with, let's say, dead bodies. But it has just the best soundtrack to set the mood. And just hearing that music brings back memories of how good this game actually was. The story is that you died in more than age, rip. And then you found yourself set back in time, tasked with being a keeper of graveyards. So you have to be a good graveyard keeper in order to return to your current life and current time. There is crafting, there is farming, there is collecting materials. Can you see a pattern? This is what I like to do in video games. There is a bunch of side quests with good storytelling, actually. A lot of different events on different days of the week and it has some morally questionable and dark elements. But the gameplay loop is that of a life simulator or a farming sim, basically. This is one very special and unique gem that I just hope you're not missing out on playing sometime. 
And it is on sale everywhere, basically. These are old, all of these games are older games by now. And you may actually find them on sale, I mean, either on Steam, PC or Switch or PlayStation 4. I mean, just look around. Some of these games are even on Xbox at this point. And my next underrated Switch indie game is actually one of the more recently released ones uh, that came out in 2021, and that is called Dwarf Journey. So Dwarf Journey is a roguelite. And I know that word roguelite tends to scare off a lot of people because we see so many games like that nowadays, especially on the Switch and a lot of indie games. But Dwarf Journey is, and I'll be honest, it's not too much different from other roguelites. You play as this cute little dwarf who basically must uh, explore this hidden like cavern area and that's up in the skies essentially. And so it's all kind of steeped in, um, I don't want to say like, like Viking kind of lore, things like that, but essentially your little Viking dwarf character can uh, explore different different rooms and he basically collects gems, uh, different ores rather, such as like silver, gold, things like that. And the main premise is around going to each room, fighting a boss at the end, which are really creative, and then making it to the next room, so forth, so on. You get different upgrades and rune stones. And the main pool though is these little, like I said, gemstones uh, or mineral deposits that you can actually mine. And when you mine for them, you can basically, it's kind of one of those risk rewards where you can take as much as you want, but if you do die, you lose most of that so the best thing to do is to find like a little mine cart that you put that ore in and that actually delivers it back to your home base area which is cool and that home base area there you can learn more about the lore you have a blacksmith you can upgrade you can add different weapons and armor which you can upgrade and different rune stones that help make you stronger so again it's not so much different from any other roguelite but it plays really well it's very fluid and polished and playing as your little dwarf he can do this really nice double jump and wall climb that gets him all across the levels so if you're familiar with some of the mechanics of Celeste or uh, something like the roguelite nature of Scourgebringer, which is another great indie game, it's just really polished and fluid and provides that nice gameplay loop. And I think it comes in at just under $10 on the Switch. So it's, it's really good if you're into the roguelite genre. And I think a lot of people miss that. Now, Mulaka, one of the first indie developed games that I actually played on my Nintendo Switch and one of my first reviews, don't watch it because it's super cringy. But it is still a memorable game for me. Mulaka is a 3D action adventure game set in a Tarahumara culture with a beautiful low polygraphical style and endless running. You explore, you fight, you transform into a bird sometimes and you can fly. And you can use your spiritual vision to do puzzle solving, etc. You can collect plants to replenish potions and progress your game to a bunch of exciting levels, different kinds of levels. You can also smash a bunch of smashable objects, which is oddly satisfying. There is a skill tree in the game and also several other transformations than the bird that I mentioned. This game is special and it is on this list for a reason. I still highly recommend that you check this hidden gem out. Check out Malacca. And the next game for me is going to be another platformer called Goblin Sword. So Goblin Sword I never hear anybody talking about. It's basically a action platformer. It kind of reminds me of like the 2D Link. What was it? Link's 2, Link's Awakening, is that it? But it kind of reminds me of like a fantasy-based platformer in which you play this little knight character who has to go through various stages. So this game actually first started life on mobile devices, which I know is not always the best thing to get ported over to Switch. But if you didn't know that and you just played this game as it was on the eShop, it's really really fun so essentially you you go through different stages through like a forest and a castle and basically just kind of your traditional fantasy trope areas but your uh, knight character can get different relics and armor pieces and weapons that make him stronger but as you progress through each level there's a lot of exploration and that's what makes it fun so it's not it's linear in the sense that you go from point a to point b it is stage based um but basically there are different gems that you can acquire there are different uh, magic abilities you can acquire and you can 
find hidden treasure chests in, in these walls that you're you can kind of tell you can get into but not 100 percent sure and it encourages really fun platforming exploration similar to like what a metroidvania would do but it's not a metroidvania game so it's just one of those easy to pick up and play games it has some really really fun fantasy music the stages are all enjoyable and again it encourages that replayability because you can get new armor and items and relics and things like that so if you really like a fantasy based platformer with action and sword play and some magic and it's not a long game maybe coming in around three hours or so uh, but it's a lot of fun and i really really enjoy it and i think people that like that fantasy platforming with uh, action and upgrades will really enjoy that so make sure to check out goblin sword if it sounds like and looks like a game for you now moonlighter has one of the most memorable soundtracks that i can think of from recent years and I know for a fact that Switch Up Mark loves it too. He uses it all the time. Maybe he doesn't, but I feel like he uses it all the time. Don't. Anyway, it is both a dungeon crawler with a top-down perspective and a shop simulator. Believe it or not, they are mixing both of these genres in one game. And who knew that these two genres would fit so well together? In the dungeons, you collect as many items as you possibly can, without dying, preferably, to return it all to your shop to sell things off for a profit, hopefully. The dungeons reminds me somewhat of Zelda Ness dungeons in a way. Top down, going from one room to another. Now, on the shop side of things, you have to impress your customers by selling your items at just the correct price to make a profit. Too high and they will maybe barge out and too low and you may actually miss out on some of the profit. Improve your shop and your town with your earnings and progress the game. Simple premise, but it is actually easy to die in this game. And when you die, you don't get all of your items with you out of the dungeon. So it's like, you have to make a decision. Do I go further into the dungeon and risk losing a bunch of stuff? Or do I retreat at this point with the things that I already have sort of thing? And the shop simulation is uh, highly enjoyable. Okay, and my final underrated Switch indie game that I'm super excited to talk about is actually a game that I don't think I've heard any other channel or anyone talk about. Certainly could be wrong about that, but I haven't heard it. And that is called Putty Pals. So Putty Pals is a solo or co-op, definitely better in co-op, game where you play as these two little putty pals. They're these little blob-like uh, Play-Doh looking characters who are actually really adorable and charming and you can like give a little thumbs up to your partner. But essentially it's, in, it's a puzzle platforming game. And as you kind of are getting a theme from this, my channel and the Indie Gaming Guild and myself in general, I love platforming games, adventure games, things like that. But I have fond memories of Putty Pals because it's actually uh, one of the first or one of in the first few months I started playing a lot more games with my wife and she and I picked up Putty Pals on a sale. It's not an expensive game, um, but on the eShop, it, it looks generic. It looks like a game that you'd probably watch the trailer, see the screenshots and say, hey, that doesn't look like it's that fun. Now, I have played the game in solo. It's not as good. You can play with both thumbsticks as well as the triggers to like move and jump. You have to be strategic. Um, it's fine, but the best way to play Putty Pals is with a friend or family member. So I played this with my wife. It only took a couple of hours, but you go through these different stages as these little blob-like Play-Doh characters, and it's all about puzzle solving and basically navigating these gaps where you have to grab onto each other and you can give each other a little thumbs up and you're each different colors. So you have to go through different colored areas as one to open up an area for your next person to go. Um, you can also make like a little trampoline out of your character to jump on. It's just silly and charming and lighthearted. Um, the story is just about rescuing all of your little putty pal friends. And I think a lot of people will miss this game. I've talked about it a lot on my channel, the Indie Gaming Guild, um, but it seemed like a game that people need to try, especially if you have a family member or friend or loved one or whatever that you like co-op games, Putty Pals is really fun, it's charming, and you can finish it up in a couple of hours. So make sure to check that one out on the eShop. It's probably on a really deep sale all the time now. Thank you so much to the Indie Gaming Guild for this collab video. Check out his channel down below and make sure you subscribe to him. He covers a bunch of indie games. And if you drop a like on this video, I would be happy because actually, my last video had such an impressive amount of likes on it. I was very happy to see that. Maybe it is because I told you guys that you can actually hit like on your TV. Like when you're on your TV and watching YouTube, you can hit down and you find, yeah. Thank you so much for watching and I will definitely see you later.
Look, I got new curtains.